Good afternoon, and uh, thank you very much for having us on this panel, a very illustrious panel here, and uh, representing various sectors. Uh, and the topic that we are going to discuss is employability, which I think is one of the biggest problems, or I would say challenges, that we have in the sector, and how do we get around it. So if you really look at it earlier, when you heard Firoz, he said over 99% of those who are autistic don't get an employment opportunity. You find that the numbers are not very much different in many of the other disabilities also. And uh, government has a reservation uh, that they've talked about 4%, some places 5%. Many of the private sectors are taking initiative, but you should remember that the biggest employer in the country is not government. It is a private sector. So what can corporates do about it? And that is why we have such a panel here. And I'm going to start with you. If you can just, and the first round, of course, I'm going to take, we'll probably take a minute or two. What are the big challenges that employability for people with disabilities is there today, or, or inclusive employment that we have today in the country? Uh, I think the, uh, the biggest challenge that uh, we have around employment for people with disability is one, that people with disabilities are kept out of the education system. So the, uh, the government data says, you know, 75% of people with disabilities, this is the government data, they drop out of school at the secondary level. And uh, this is the only, the population which is able to go to school. And uh, the rest of the population, which is more than about 60%, uh, never even attend school. So, you know, if you don't have employment, uh, it's because you may not have the kind of qualification, because you mentioned private sector as, a, as an employment opportunity, that's one. And, and, and second is this acute lack of awareness about issues around disability, uh, or understanding disability as, as one of the diversity, so uh, leads to, uh, you know, lack of employment for people with disabilities. Brilliant. I think uh, you all can hear me. No, I uh, go. With, I agree with everything uh, which I heard from uh, the panelists here. But I would emphasize more on um, the lack of awareness. I think there's still a lot of opportunity to create that awareness of how we can bring the mainstream. Um, I mean, uh, the people with disability to mainstream and create opportunities in the corporate sector. And that's where our focus is on. And that's where I'm sure other corporations are focusing on as well. Because once you create the awareness, uh, I think creating opportunity really? is fairly easier task. Nidhi? Yeah, I think firstly I'd like to thank uh, that I got this opportunity firstly to attend this amazing, I, I won't call it an event as Feroz has been saying, it, this has been an amazing experience for me. And I think uh, from a skilling point of view or from an employability point of view, um, you know, we, I read a data which said that 1.3 uh, crore uh, people with disability in India are employable, right? But only 34 lakh people are employed. So one, there is, of course, we are talking about that uh, people are not skilled enough, people with disability may not be skilled enough because of lack of education, lack of awareness. But there is also the fact that there is enough effort happening to make people with disability employable but the other side may not be responding well to it, but there may be a lack of awareness from the corporate sector to say how do they integrate that into the system. So while uh, you know, I represent the tech in industry and tech industry is the biggest employer, uh, for, employer for the um, uh, people with disability, but there is still a huge gap and I'm saying that you know, there is, there is a, still a gap of 70 to 80 lakh people who are not, who are, who are employable but are not employed. So yes, there is gap everywhere in our education system, in our scaling system, in our awareness, but also I think um, a more responsibility from the corporate sector. We, we have a picture of what the sector is and uh, one of the things which we've had in the past was a typical Indian at Ayo Pavo, sympathy. And there was a lack of empathy in the whole thing or creating the opportunities there. Uh, I'm going to uh, request Anil to start with this, Anil. And if you could cover generally across the, you know, it's not just tech, but every, and I think you all are doing that. Yeah. If you can just talk about what initiatives are there and how do, what are the other learnings that other corporates can take from this? Yeah. So look, I think we as an organization, JPMC, um, inclusion is at the heart of everything what we do. Uh, from the top, right? So it's not like an optional thing, right? That's the first thing. Second, uh, we have actually moved further beyond like having few programs as a nice to have 
to a must have conversation in every business decisions we start to make, right? So that's the shift we are making in the mindset itself. So then they are like various business resource groups like accessibility is one of the prominent business group in JPMC which covers globally the focus on inclusion on various dimensions, right? So it's not just with people with uh, special ability, but a uh, lot of other dimensions are covered in it. And we in India are very, very lucky to actually progress further beyond like certain, uh, you know, OKRs or the KRs which were set. And the number of volunteers in the organization each year, each month, they are participating is increasing. And that momentum I know for sure, uh, speaking to other colleagues in the other corporation in India uh, is increasing. And a platform like India Inclusion uh, Forum uh, is certainly helping us learn further avenues for us to kind of contribute to the community itself. Nidhi, what, what is it that the tech sector is doing here? I know there are many companies, Feroz and others, started off that movement. Uh, as well. so if you can just tell us what's happening in the tech sector. Sure. So I think uh, as far as the overall tech sector goes, uh, there is work happening in different ways, different dimensions. And uh, one, of course, we are talking from, a, um, like Faroz mentioned, the 1%, and a, a couple of companies are replicating that. So it's starting from there, definitely. But uh, also in terms of the fact that a lot of DNI leaders within the corporate sector have made uh, disability one of their primary uh, charter, a part of their primary, uh, you know, uh, uh, concentration and importance out there. So uh, definitely there is a lot of, uh, you know, uh, also the fact that, you know, a lot of uh, leaders from the tech industry have taken the pledge of with, with a, that 500 companies to be making their own companies, uh, you know, uh, accessible for people with disability, employing a certain number of people. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, intervention happening. There's a lot of commitment from the industry, but there's also a parallel thing, which is from the CSR point of view. Uh, a lot of companies, while they're talking about from education or skilling or even health point of view, they are committing to a certain percentage of their fund uh, in the area of disability. Of course, the volume needs to grow, the commitments need to grow. But at least the momentum has started. And uh, the fact that a lot of tech leaders, let's say if we have Anil sitting out here and saying that he, his understanding is better and the company is, uh, com is committing more, I think that's where it is. Uh, I see a lot more. And I would just say that, you know, uh, nothing comparable to this. But even at NASCOM Foundation, when we do a global inclusion summit, uh, the kind of commitments that we are coming from, that's coming from the tech industry. Uh, the kind of conversations we are seeing, the kind of uh, um, uh, the, the, the involvement that the leaders have out there, I think that's, that's extremely encouraging. And I feel, yes, of course, the other industries need to pick up from there. I mean, if you can, uh, I mean, you, I know you, uh, there's a lot of work you all are doing in this area in terms of uh, advocacy, etc. Uh, what is it that really corporate should be doing? You know, I think, um, one of the thing about me that when I come and speak in a forum, they don't invite me the second time. Yeah. So, I, but I'll take, uh, but I'm here the second time thanks for my uh, friendship with Feroz. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the things that, uh, 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 you know, the corporates needs to understand that, uh, and people with disability community also need to understand that when you are looking for employment, uh, disability is not your qualification. And when you are going to hiring uh, for people with disabilities, it's not a CSR activity. Correct. It's a hardcore HR operation. So, and, 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 uh, um, and so, you know, for, for us in a forum like this, when people across uh, uh, the spectrum are here, to understand that I may have a disability, uh, which the corporate has to ensure that when I apply for a job, I don't get discriminated. I, uh, I get an equal playing field. So this, you know, so this, and I keep saying this uh, on and off uh, in various forums and again, not get invited, that what do you do when you run out of pity? What do you do when you run, of, run out of compassion? So because, you know, the, if you look at disability as a human rights issue, if you look at disability as a development issue, and if you don't change your systems, which take people with disabilities along, okay? And, 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 and uh, 
it's a good thing to do. You know, a lot of people say that disability is a good thing to do. And, 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 and you know, we have the strongest legislation in the You from the government, sir, you understand. We have the strongest legislation in the world around disability. And uh, it talks about reasonable accommodation. I mean, you know, how many corporates are talking about reasonable accommodation as a policy? You know, people with disability need reasonable accommodation to fit in. You know, when they come from the interview process to the, to uh, getting, um, you know, uh, know their work and, and, and getting uh, to be a part of the growing uh, uh, team and also being fired when you're not able to uh, perform. Uh, so I think this, this understanding need to be developed uh, in, in terms of policies and so on. Uh, uh, yeah. Allow me a few more seconds because next time I'll not be here. Uh, <laughs> no, so no, uh, I mean, if there yeah, is a panel, so I think Firoz will definitely call it. Yeah, yeah, right. So, you know, we talked about data, uh, and, and Firoz hates, hates me for this that I do around data most of the time. So, like, every 10,000 employees in the IT sector, there's only 22% with disability who's employed. So, so, that's the figure that we have, and this is like top 100 companies in India. And I was fiddling into my mobile phone when you started to talk. Because I wanted to share this with everyone that the top 100 companies in India, like there are 30 to 32 people, uh, people with disabilities, out of 10,000 employees, 30 to 32 people out of 10,000 employees, not 100 employees or 1,000 okay. employees, 10,000 employees for the year from the, between year 18 to 21. It used to be 29 earlier. It has grown to 30, 32. And uh, government, where you say that it's a mandatory for government to reserve, uh, you know, 4% of jobs for people with disabilities, it, it, it remains uh, uh, at uh, 213 people every 10,000 employees. And uh, we, I need to cut it short. I will just tell you for, for the financial year 13, 17, 18, 19. So it is 0.39%. It is 0.47% and for the year uh, nine, uh, uh, financial year uh, 19, 0.46% is the percentage of people with disabilities who's got employment right. in the private sector of top 100 companies. So if, if this is a scenario and if you want to serious about including people with disability as part of your workforce, uh, it has to be a mission mode. Uh, I think Nidhi is here and she'll second uh, it when I say, they have to invest into people with disabilities. Correct. They have to invest, get people trained, get people accustomed to what is the need and what skills they need to be there. When they do their onboarding, how you invest in your own culture, how you invest in your own infrastructure so that, True. you know, it, it's part of the system and it's in, in, in the policy. Uh, so that, uh, you know, it doesn't look like a CSR for the True. whole thing True. and one doesn't lose out. So actually taking on from there, one of the things which you notice is that uh, many a time, like you said, it's nice to say that we take on people with disability, but numbers don't really meet anywhere. Uh, the other thing is that, you know, the laws are very clear about um, accessibility, all right? But a lot of people think that you put a ramp in the front of your building and the ramp will be something like this, okay, which you can't even walk up, you think the building becomes accessible. And now, um, from the side of corporates, I just a suggestion, I don't want to be mixing CSR and the HR part of it, like you said, but why can't we look at serious corporates telling that we will set aside a certain percentage of our CSR funds, 10, 15, 20%, because you must remember that training up a person with disability is much more costlier than any of the other CSR activities you do because, and I like Firoz because he says he doesn't measure impact. Unfortunately, all corporates measure impact and then they say, oh, with, if I give notebooks to schools, I can touch 500,000 children, but I can then only train up two individuals with autism. So how do we get over that? And is it something which corporates can think about? We are just going to do a quick one minute round, and then I think I've got another five more minutes after that. So after that one minute, I, I want to keep time on that. So I would like to start with both of you, and or, or you want to start? You may pretend not to have seen him. No, no, no. <laughs> No, no, I, I know, but I think we should because yeah. otherwise we will, many people will miss their, back, and you know, Bangalore getting from one place to other. I can reach Trivandrum faster than many of them will reach their homes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so what can we do that? And, and from the foundation and you being part of uh, one of the top corporates, can we get other people to say, we will set aside a substantial percentage of our CSR 
for supporting the disability sector, for training up people whom we will employ. And don't so, mix CSR with the, it's not the, sure. just because you've trained people doesn't mean you need to take them. And I fully agree that it is not about sympathy. And another thing which I think we should do is, we also need to be training our people who work in the sector with whom the individual with the disability will be working on how do you, I, I, I don't want to use the word accommodation, but how do you work with them? And what do you do, what do you not do? Because sometimes people don't understand that. So this is again something which needs time and effort. What do you think, Nidhi, I'll start with you on that. So, uh, you know, I hope there is, I uh, hope and I hope, sorry, yeah. I hope and I really hope that there is nobody from government here because I'm going to just add something to what Arman was saying, something a little uh, controversial out here. So Even if there's somebody, don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Take so I'm just saying it. maybe I'm not invited here again the next time, yeah. uh, but I'm a committed volunteer to Feroz from now onwards, so I will be here. But, um, uh, you know, uh, we're talking about CSR and a commitment to CSR, I think, uh, the problem is, since we earlier spoke about in certain areas, it's difficult to measure impact. Correct. Unfortunately, the CSR laws have become so complicated and I'm dealing with them every day. Um, the corporates, even if they want to, they are not being able to invest money into long term. To skill somebody with a severe disability will take you a few years, right? But the government is saying, give me a report today. So, and they want everything before 31st of March. So while there are some of them who will take certain kind of measures to kind of uh, deal with it, but most of them don't want to get into compliances. So yes, of course, while we are dealing in terms of with the government on many other issues, that's one big, big thing that maybe at least for people with disabilities, some exemptions need to be made out here because we cannot look at this thing as short term. It is a very long term intervention. And the second thing is that while yes, HR, CSR, all of that is important. I would just say that, and I say that even in every intervention that we do from a CSR point of view, inclusion has to be seen as a business purpose. One cannot keep on looking at it only as a, my HR agenda or my CSR agenda, unless it is seen as how, what is the value addition in terms of profits when you employ people with disability. That is where I think the change starts happening. If it's just, otherwise it will be pity, it will be sympathy, it, it will be short term, the leader will change, the policies will change. So unless there is proof data to say that how a, this, having a specific program to employ people with disability, how is that a business investment? And just not HR and CSR. See, uh, Firoz had given that example earlier, <clears throat> and, uh, uh, where he talked about the, uh, the three individuals with autism who were employed, but producing better yes. than others, and I've seen that yeah. with the uh, with the with the deaf, where I've had CEOs call me up and say, my other teams are working better because they say that this guy can't hear and he's working so much, then I better work better. So the the impact that can be made in the company is high, and that's something. So yeah, uh, no, yeah. I was just going to make a few points yeah. uh, related to everything they said. First and foremost, we as an organization, we've been at the, at the subject for a while, and we have stopped actually measuring in terms of numbers Great. and obligation. Great. Absolutely, we have moved past that. So now our focus to the point I was making earlier is creating awareness on uh, several fronts, right? One, first and foremost, it's not about how many people you can give opportunity, how you can actually onboard them, how you can make their experience better, how you can sustain them in the organization and bring them to mainstream. It's about creating the rest of the ecosystem or making them ready, making them start treating the individuals with disability as like a talented pool of resources as opposed to people who they need to handle as a challenge, right? So that's where our focus is. And I have to say now uh, the conversation we have and the language we use is special talent. Yes. And to the point you are making, we have evidences in the last couple of years that people with special uh, ability are performing so much better in certain activities, yeah. which is an opportunity which we are missing out. If we start all of us thinking in that way, this conversation about obligation Correct. and also. numbers, everything will eventually fade away. That's my view. Uh, man, one minute on the same subject. <laughs> Uh, I uh, kind of lost you. What is that you want? No, no. Okay, say? so let, let's do what you know. I get to the last uh, this thing. Yeah. Uh, we just have a couple of minutes. So I, you know, no, no, no. One recommendation and one takeaway which the corporates here can take back. So I think number on one, we know that the corporate is, is 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 running the country and they need to put their weight 
behind disabled people. Correct. So okay. where is, uh, where do they put their goodwill on? Do they put your, your goodwill on, uh, you know, building lives of disabled people or just trying to, uh, um, you know, uh, distribute free uh, wheelchairs, which is substandard, Perfect. not usable? So I think you need to understand, uh, 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 to invest in people, uh, you have to invest, and, 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 and like Anil right. said, you know, it's like people, you, you, you. So you're telling that they need to be serious about what they're I doing. I think they need to look at disability as a development Great. issue, as an inclusion issue, Great. where you need to invest in people, the people first, then come the disability. And the disability is in the environment. Good. And if the corporate in, uh, put their weight behind disabled people, will things will fall into Great. place. Anil, one recommendation. No, I, I, as I said, two, I, will, ones, yeah. I will emphasize uh, again the same point. I think we should start embracing this as an opportunity. In every uh, dimension, trust me, it is possible. Okay. We have examples, and uh, that is my humble request to everybody. Nidhi? I think, uh, you know, we need more uh, business leaders like Feroz, uh, but they don't need to go through the pain, so they need to be aware about the pain of others. We, uh, and from there, I think they just need to lead from the front and have more of these kind of... Uh, intervention conversations and some decision making. So I think more awareness at the top level will really, really make it a more inclusive agenda. Good, great recommendations. Uh, we've uh, on time, correct? Thank you very much. A uh, uh, lot of points which have come out. The discussion does not stop. Sure. Okay, it continues, and each of us will take it forward. But what's more important is for those of you who are who've been listening to this, take it back to your companies and tell them this is how it matters. Thank you very much and thanks Thank a lot, Spiros, for having this panel on.